The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we'll take a look here at the German DAX. You can see we completed that guardly. We really haven't gone anywhere. It's very, very quiet over in Europe. And if we take a look, of course, at the FTSE, we're going to be seeing the same thing. It's backed off a little bit, but actually, you know, not very much at all. So we're going to be going to be looking at some of these things in depth here this morning. Uh, one of the questions that uh, popped up yesterday by email was to talk a little bit about the uh, the fact that, uh, you know, Milken worked in the building there at the corner of Rodeo and Wilshire. Folks, if you're interested in about the culture of, of Drexel, Burnham, Limbert and what happened, the book to read is The Den of Thieves by James Stewart. It's really, it really tells it like it is. Uh, the book, uh, The Predator's Ball, was uh, actually funded by Milken to make him look a little better, but it's okay, but nothing like the Den of Thieves. James Stewart got a, an award for that book, and it is a very, very good book. The Milken building was at the end of Rodeo Drive. This was before Rodeo Drive was very um, popular. It was just really a little small retail street that had all kinds of empty shops because the it was 1974, 75. We were coming out of a recession, so there was a lot of... Uh, empty shops in here. Anyway, if we uh, take a look at the uh, what uh, what happened during that time is Milken went to Wharton uh, School of Business there at the University of Pennsylvania, and he had an idea because uh, interest rates were, were so high during that time, and they got higher and higher as we went into 1980, that small companies could not get funding. And so he had an idea about junk bonds, and he, he decided to call them high-yield bonds instead of junk bonds. And so he approached a bunch of uh, firms, uh, you know, to uh, uh, do this type of thing. And uh, he was turned down by quite a few, but Drexel Burnham uh, decided to try it. And so he wanted to go to California. So they went to Beverly Hills and there was a building there that was owned by um, a real estate developer. And that, that's where the Drexel office was. On the first floor was the, um, uh, the retail section. By the time I got there in 1976, he'd been there several years and uh, now they built the whole building was uh, basically all controlled by uh, Drexel Burnham. They they leased everything. Uh, about two years after that, Milken was making so much money. Uh, one of his checks uh, paid for the building. He still owns that building at the corner of Wilshire and Rodeo, and it's still there. If you look at, um, we well, can Google it if you want to. But anyway, um, on the second floor, uh, the lobby the lobby was where uh, there were 33 brokers. Uh, excuse me, 23 brokers. On the first floor, we had three commodity brokers, myself, Twentyman, and Ernie Mossman. I ran the commodity department, and then they had 20 brokers that ran the retail department for stocks and bonds and stuff like that, regular bonds, not the junk bonds. And then on the second floor is where they had the cafeteria. And um, the when you worked for Milken, Milken was in, he was in the office usually by 4 or 5 in the morning. I didn't get there until about 5.30. But sometimes I would get there real early. I would get there at 3.30 or 4 if I couldn't sleep just to, you know, look over charts and stuff like that. And he always wondered whose car that was because it was not easy to get parking. And uh, I had a chance to meet him a couple times over the years. Uh, he wanted to interview me for a job up there on that uh, up in the junk bond department. And my boss came in to me and he said, I don't even want you to think about that. He said, you don't want to do that kind of work. And I said, okay, whatever you tell me, I'll, I'll do it. But uh, those guys made, they made a lot of money. Everybody up there made a million dollars or more. And that's when a million dollars was a lot of money, folks, in the mid-70s. Uh, but on the second floor is where they had the cafeteria and, and milk and fed everybody. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They worked from, uh, usually you had to be in there by 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning or you weren't, you weren't going to work for milk because they worked from 6 until 8 at night, 14-hour days, five days a week, and it was a hard work, but uh, they did cater the food to the folks, really great stuff, and the person that catered it was Margot Grant, 
and Margo was Jim Twentyman's main squeeze, and so we we had an in on all that stuff, and it was uh, it was fun, whatever, whatever. But one of the I want to tell you the reason for the, all this, and I don't want to get involved too much, but how you know Milken Mil Milken was a great businessman, a true genius, no question about it. But boy, he really had some work ethics that were beyond belief. One of his employees, one of one of the top guys, one of the top twenty guys. <laughs> one of the top 20 guys uh his mother died and uh, he had to go to the funeral so he, he went to the he went to the funeral and when um this is long before cell phones and when, before he went to the funeral Milken told him he said I'd like to have you back here by four o'clock to finish the day and uh, he did he came back at four o'clock he cleaned out his desk and left never worked for Milken another day and uh that was uh that was one of the stories that uh, we got down the down the pike uh, when it filtered down from the fourth floor, but we'll see. Uh, I'll, Marshall's asking about childhood stories from Terre Haute. Marshall, that's so long ago. I can't even. I can't even. Uh, I can't even remember some of them. My uh, my cousin passed away here in Tucson. Uh, she was 85 just a few, well, about a month ago, and her brother is now in the hospital in Terre Haute. Uh, and they're they're they're. Their grandfather and my grandfathers were brothers. That's how we're how, that's how we're all related. And uh, but anyway, the, the, I, I don't want to tell those old tarot stories because some of them are they're really kind of silly. But that's neither here nor there. Okay, let's uh, let's move on uh, to talk about some of these markets because that's what we're really uh, trying to do here. Yesterday, Mr. Z sent me something really interesting, and I, I thought I'd share it with you. It's a, a chart of the Wilshire 5000. And uh, what I've done here is I put in the uh oh let's just get this up here so we can see it here. Um, this is the Wilshire 5000. I've never traded it. I'm just looking at it on a uh, pattern basis. As you can see, we've completed the ABCD pattern up in this area on the, uh, and that's a perfect one. If you uh, want to do it yourself, you you know you certainly can do that. But pay close attention to it because we are in an area now because we're up really strongly now for two weeks. You know we're up 173 pips, I believe, or ticks from the handles from the from the bottom that we made on December the 26th. We're very close to the ABCD part of that move, so it's going to be really interesting as whether we're going to be able to do that. Now, what I did this morning, just to make a comparable uh, pattern, is to go in and look at the New York Stock Exchange Index. And I did the hourly chart on that, and as you can see, since December the 26th, we've now completed the ABCD pattern. Uh, we haven't quite made the 61% retracement. We're right at 60%, 59.8. And uh, you know, but that is an ABCD move. So we're we're entitled, uh, or at least the, the market is, to some type of a correction here. So we'll see. Uh, uh, Okay, Ruby's asking me a question here that I'll have to think about. What is the most important thing that you've learned over the years? If you can say it, please. Very simple. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. And one other thing is always try to take care of people that have a whole lot less than you because, uh, you know, you don't want to be walking in their shoes. I see the homeless here in Tucson and, and New York and even in Hong Kong, other places, boy. And if you go to China, you want to see the the uh, the uh, homeless. You got to be scared. There are three billion homeless children that, that roam the streets in Beijing. That's it. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I've posted the chart of the gold that we looked at yesterday. We were looking for that rally to come up to 0 0.5 at that uh, 1295 level, and we, we got there, but we went a little bit higher. We went up to 1298.5, and, and basically what that did was complete an ABCD pattern. However, looking at it from a 135 pattern where you have to have some equality between 13 and 5, that that pattern actually failed because even though it hit 1295 and backed off a few few dollars, once it went higher than that, the the numbers are so accurate with that darn pattern that you just uh, you can't stand in front of it. And so it completed the ABCD up at the 1298 level, which is okay. That that's uh, finished uh, right on time. But uh, that pattern actually did did not work, and that's one of the reasons when you're looking at some of these patterns that when they don't work, you know, you've got a really good chance for, uh, you know, something to, uh, uh, you know, work in your favor, and that keeps your risk as small as possible. A perfect example of that was uh, happening last night uh, in the euro. Let me just get this up here uh, to let you folks take a quick look at it, and all I have to do is find it here, and, you know, there it is. You'll see um, I have to bring this to your attention because this is the um, – this is the euro. Now, you'll notice that high that I'm pointing there on January the 1st, that is the correct high. Uh, the data that we have for uh, eSignal, which comes out of, uh, you know, interactive brokers now is just bad data. And you know what? They don't even care. Uh, they don't even bother to fix it. But, you know, fortunately, we have CQG to verify this. But this was the high was at um, 116. Uh, 55. We came all the way down to 113, and we dropped 30, three handles. And then last night we rallied in ABCD format right up to that 115.60, and we broke 60 pips uh, from that level. So we'll see. And uh, that would be something. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, Maria, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that anymore because <laughs> I'm not gonna do any more of the AI stuff because, you know, we had a, a big move. Uh, we had a big move down. In the uh, market yesterday, uh, right after that time that we were looking, uh, it dropped, uh, you know, 25 handles to the downside and then went up and made a new high. So, you know, sometimes it uh, works. It's just like uh, some people like chocolate cake. Some people like 
vanilla cake and it's whatever you like to see. But as my old grandpa used to tell me, you got to kiss a lot of frogs in the pond before you catch a princess. So some of these trades work, some of them don't. You're the one that's responsible for it. All we're trying to do is to give you some happenings. Um, David's asking the question of these data errors. I, you know, that, that error was so strange that I have no idea. I've checked with two. I, own, I know a couple of bankers uh, in the Forex business, and they don't even know what happened. I don't know if that's the case or not, so we'll see uh, if that is going to be the case. I'm, next, I'm actually not even sure. I, I hadn't seen anything. like. First of all, it was New Year's Day, and most of the banks were uh, – it had to be just a few small banks that were open during that time because the banks that I were – work with didn't even have their risk control people in that day because everything was closed but that's neither here nor there so we'll see um, since we're talking about the euro and uh, we want to relate that to the US dollar we need to get that up here to take a quick look at it here this is really important folks because um, this US dollar and we'll bring this to your attention once more uh, the thing that you have to remember you'll notice up there at the very top on the far right you're going to see the triple top at the 618 on the weekly. That is extremely important. But even more important than that is this last support that we have uh, for the dollar. Uh, that's the dollar index coming in at the uh, 9440 level. That means in the euro will be above 116 if we get to there because uh, they could easily go through that. And then it's, it's a different ball game because that big top in the U.S. dollar means a a great deal uh, technically and I and the only way you can actually um, see that is by you know taking a look at the long-term weekly chart and if we look at the long-term weekly you'll be able to see that that 61 percent retracement that we made at 97.72 with that triple top you know over a, a three-week period was very very important this is highly suggestive that the uh, dollar index is getting ready to, uh, y you know, to 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 uh, go down, and that means that the euro is getting ready to go up. So whether that happens or not, I don't know. As far as someone's asked a question about the Canadian dollar, the Canadian dollar has done nothing other than to stay on the, uh, you know, the uh, long side of the dollar versus the Canadian. Unfortunately, the way they post it. And my uh, stuff is when the Canadian dollar is going down, it shows us going up. So it's on its way down. It's down 400 and some pips just in just this week. So that's a that's a huge move. Now, whether it's going to continue to go or not, but we've seen nothing to say that it is going to do anything other than possibly make that 131 level, which is the 61% retracement. And if you looked at it really closely, we had equal moves during uh, 2018 when we made the May bottom. We had the same equal move when we made the September bottom, and here we are coming into 2019, and it uh, looks like we're going to make that same bottom down around the uh, 131 level if that's going to happen. I don't know if that's going to be it or not. You know, have to wait and see. But uh, it's all about probabilities, folks. It's never about certainty. That's the the key uh, to be uh, thinking about when you look at some of these things. Someone's asked me a question about Sears and Eddie Lambert. Uh, I don't run in those kind of circles, but all I can tell you is uh, Eddie Lambert is a pretty shrewd guy, and if he's offering $5 billion for the the assets of, Sil uh, of, of Sears, I can almost promise you that they're worth a whole lot more than $5 billion because uh, that guy – uh, he knows what he's doing, and he certainly doesn't want to, uh, you know, put himself at very much risk, and that's it. One other thing that was really interesting this morning, uh, it, I was treated when I first turned on the tube today to check on the markets and stuff. Jeff Vinnick, uh, the guy who runs Vinnick Asset Management, he owns the Tampa Bay Lightning hockey team. He worked for uh, Fidelity for many years. He was one of their lead guys, and I actually talked to him a couple times over the years. And he is an astute technician. He talks about fundamentals when he was on the, the tube today, but that guy really knows fundamentals. He was very familiar with Fibonacci, and he was familiar with patterns. But he was their lead uh, stock picker for many, many years. And then Mr. Soros picked him up, and from then on, it's history. So that's uh, pretty much uh, – that's oh, wow, Jeff Finnick was your – wow, we – 
Hey, that's pretty cool, Mr. Z. Well, the, you know, very, very, uh, <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. Anyway, he lives in, um, he, well, he has several homes, but down in Florida, in, uh, in Sarasota, uh, he has a big home there and uh, drive by it all the time on the way to the, uh, the Kmart there to pick up my uh, usual uh, uh, early morning popcorn. Anyway, we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, 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 it was Jeff Vinnick, J-E-F-F-V-I-N-E-K. He's been on CNBC several times this morning. So you could probably look up and take a look at it. But he's, a, he's about, uh, Mr. Z, you're about 52, aren't you? I think Vinny could probably be about that old, and uh, that would be my guess. But he's going to go back into the hedge fund business. And uh, But Soros is the one that made him the big name, because after he left Fidelity, he took in money management through uh, Soros to, and made a big name for himself. 877-927-6648. Age 59. There you go. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com hey folks we're back and i posted the chart of the uh e-mini uh four hour and also the uh the 15 minute to take a look at it because we're at a real critical junction of where we are right now i'm going to post the one that i'm looking at for today and you'll notice here that uh, we haven't had much of a uh <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hold on one second. Wow. Uh, Mr. Z's telling us that um, Jeff Finney got his first uh, uh, 
job in Value Line, just like Bill Cerubi did. And Bill will be our guest tomorrow. Bill Meridian, Bill Cerubi, uh, he uses Meridian as his pen name. And uh, he'll be on tomorrow, and we'll, we're going to discuss what he's going to be talking about. Don't miss tomorrow's show, folks, if you can, because he's going to be talking about the birth chart of El Presidente, Donald J. Trump and the fact that some people have misinterpreted it because of the wrong information. So he's going to share that with us, a couple a couple other things that are very important too. But let's look at this S&P here. Uh, as you can see here, um, for the first time yesterday, we broke the 382 retracement when we went back below uh, 2575, and it took us all the way down to 2562. Right now we rallied up to 2572, not doing very much. But if we break below that 2560 level, which is a 78% retracement of Tuesday's low, and this is being Thursday, so a two-day run, that'll tell us that that trend is most probably headed down with a target of 2535. Now, that's just looking at some simple numbers. There's not much uh, to look at other than that, so that's one of the things that we want to keep a uh, you know very, very close eye on. Regarding uh, Bill uh, Cerubi, remember... Uh, we were going to be looking at some of these things that he talked about uh, last month when he came on, and we want to see how they're turning out, because if you remember, he was looking for a high to come in on the Treasury notes around the uh, first of the year, and if we take a look at what he was looking at uh, in the, the precious metals, the gold market, you'll notice that uh, he was looking for something also to possibly come in around the time of the year. But we'll ask Bill these questions tomorrow. He'll give us a pretty good idea of what we're, what we're watching here. Now, since we're talking a little bit about the bonds, I want to bring up the, uh, the Treasury bond chart here uh, for, from yesterday. Bring it up to let you see it. We'll put this up. You'll notice that... Uh, you know, we were coming down from the from that big low that we had on the 26th. That was a day the stock market took off like a like a rabid dog, and you know had that huge run. And then we've had a ABCD structure to the downside. We didn't quite get to uh, that uh, 145.08. We got down as far as 145.10, and then it had a pretty good rally. But the bonds are beginning to take on a situation where they're they're starting to look uh, weaker. And the reason for that is during this last run that we had in the Treasury bonds, you know, we lost open interest. And whenever that happens, that's not a that's not a good sign. As prices go up and uh, open interest drops, that means short covering, and that's what was happening during that time. So it's very important to keep in keep in mind that uh, these bonds. I believe if we can get a rally back to that 146.20 level in the Treasury bonds, I'd be looking at that you know, from the short side, because we, we've shown this before, but it's worth showing again that we have an equal move here on the weekly chart up around that 147 and change, 148. In fact, it hit 148. Uh, and so there's a really high probability if this cycle is correct that Bill is looking at would really give us a pretty good chance here to see these interest rates rise. Now, I don't have any idea how that relates to the stock market because the Fed follows the the interest rates, they, you know, they say they make all these things, but you look at their history, and by golly, they're always behind the curve. But uh, that's my two cents worth, so not to worry uh, too much uh, about that. Someone's asking me about the uh, um, something that I know very little about, and that is politics, so I'm going to pass on that one. Uh, I actually try not to listen to the news as little as possible because it does have a tendency to cloud your thinking. And I, you know, if you're a technician, you just want to look at the prices and see what's happening. And one, here's one that really uh, we, we need to talk just a little bit about here because we had this uh, uh, really great pattern here in the uh, Hang Seng Index where we went down and touched the 78% level uh, several days ago. And we've had a big move off of that bottom. You can see the first day we rallied well over 600 points in the Hang Seng and it's continuing to rally since that time. It still looks like we are, uh, you know, we, we've made a pretty good uh, run off the bottom here, but, uh, you know, we, we have a possibility to seeing whether the uh, uh, the market's going to be able to go any higher or not. You, you remember we had uh, Jeff, uh, not Jeff, uh, Tim Boston. Uh, well, it was about, a, no, it was about a, well, it was more than a month ago. And let's just look what Tim was telling us at the time, because you'll notice here 
that uh, this is a, a modified Bradley model type thing. But you'll notice here he's looking for uh, a potential high coming in, um, you know, right around the uh, right around the the uh, the fifth of uh, is it the fifth? Right around the fifteenth of February. That would line up pretty well with what the Bradley is saying. But you notice here uh, that on point one is where we are right about now. This is the tenth, and you can see the eleventh in there. He's looking for a down day between the 11th and 12th and then some sideways action. So this might be what you're looking for. What we really need to, to look at and really need to look at is how these things are going to unfold. Oh, we have a special request from someone that I want to take care of right now, and that's about the home builders. Let me see if I can get this home builders. Uh, he had a question about uh, the home builders because they had a huge move, especially with Lennar. And I want to get this up and take a look at it. You you can see here over the past 18 months in the this is the ETF uh, for the home builders and it's uh, they line up uh, pretty nicely. You can see the head and shoulders pattern that occurred between April, August, and November. This is a much stronger than market uh, uh, ETF. You know it didn't go down nearly as much. It only went down to the 61% retracement. Important that we took out the lows from October 28th by just a hair and then off to the races. So that's actually a very, very positive chart for the ETF home builders, uh, in my opinion. There's a lot of resistance up there, about another $2 higher, but that's what it looks like you know, from that level. Now today, the retail sector uh, is getting smashed. Nordstrom's down 9%, you know, the Gap is down 4%, uh, Ross Stores is down 2.5%, so they're having some you know, clearance sales there, but uh, I don't follow those indices, so I'm not going to get too much into it. All I know is that that banking index still looks like solid gold to me. It hasn't changed. Uh, you know, it goes up every day after that major bottom that we had, and I don't see any reason to uh, get extremely bearish stocks at this point. I'm looking for a high up in here uh, and to see if we're going to get the next correction, but we've not had a correction of any sequence in the last uh, six trading days. And so the shorts have to be absolutely scared to death, and uh, that's something to you know to keep in mind also because uh, it's uh, been pretty big. We've had big increases in open interest in the stock index futures during this run, so the new players are coming in. So uh, even though we're due for a correction, I, I'm not sure how much it's going to be. Uh, my first point there you see is 25.60, and below that's 25.35. Getting below 25.35, which is not a big deal anymore, that's only down 60 handles from the high, that can be done in a matter of a few hours. So we're seeing great volatility, and that's what we like to see. So we want to keep in mind. Okay, 877-927-6648. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, 
copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, I've uh, been asked to take a look at this gold chart that I discussed yesterday and then also today because of the 135 pattern that we talked about. As you can see here on the chart from January 3rd through yesterday, we were looking at the 135 pattern. It stopped almost exactly at 0.5. That was the 78% retracement from 0.3. Uh, from that level, it broke down about uh, just about $4 uh, an ounce, and then it continued uh, up. And once it went be above that uh, 0.5, that, that disregarded that pattern because you have to have time and uh, you know, and ratio at the same time. And once you went above the 78% retracement, not only did you break the time sequence, but you broke the price sequence also. And that led to the, you can see the red thunderbolt there. That's the ABCD pattern that took you up to the 1298 level, which we went to. We went down to 1290, and now we're setting right at the uh, uh, 1292 level. So that's what it looks like uh, in the gold market. So we'll see. Remember, uh, back on January the 3rd, when we went up to $13, the uh, long-term Fibonacci relationship on the weekly chart came in at 1294. We're, we're within about $2 of that right now. Now, silver uh, yesterday did not make that new high like we did in the gold market, so that's still backing off a little bit, and the gold-silver index is still lagging badly, but the rest of it looks like it's uh, it's holding up uh, really nicely, so we'll, we'll do one thing at a time in here to see how they work. Someone's asking me another question about Apple. Uh, you know, folks, we had a, a, a long-term 61 Fibonacci ratio on the weekly chart of Apple at 144. We went down to 142, had a pretty good rally. Um, the, you know, the question is regarding to what you hear in the news about production and stuff like that, folks, that's beyond the pay grade of a technician because I don't have access to that information. And, and not only that, if I did, I probably wouldn't believe it. You know, so if, you, if, you're, looking at, uh, if you're looking for fundamentals and stuff, you're going to have to go to a new shop because uh, technical analysis relies on the bar chart to tell you what the news is doing. If there's more buyers, prices are going up. If there's more sellers, prices are going down. So we'll see uh, see what's looking at. So, oh, Bob is asking a question about uh, the uh, soybeans. I'm very bullish, the soybeans, uh, as you can imagine. Uh, we're, we're into the time frame where we're going to be starting about uh, planning intentions pretty soon here in another month or so. But uh, let's take a quick look here. We can do this very quickly for Bob up in uh, Washington. And we'll pull up the uh, March soybeans and let everybody take a quick look at them. Hopefully, I'm in the process of doing that right now. And there they are. Bring it up here. Have a little bit of sell-off, which is what we're, oh, I got the wrong contract. Sorry, boys and girls. Give me a second here. Don't want to ever give an Italian. Hold on, let's get here. There we go. This very small sell-off here. This is really not very much. We'll get it up here so we can take. Let's look at the hourly here uh, together because uh, I think we've got a, a chance here. Oh, we're we're actually down about uh, 
10 cents, that's pretty good. Let's just draw in the FIB numbers here to get a pretty good idea of what we're looking at, and then we can, uh, not really much of a pattern showing, a very small ABCD here coming in at the 382, down about 4 cents from where we are. Let's get this in here to draw it, because it is, in fact, a little guardly there at 911. Uh, Let's get this up here so everybody can take a quick look at it. I'm doing this on the fly, so we'll see. I, Mike, I don't believe retail is dead. Uh, if you have any women in your family, you'll know that they love to shop, and that is not going to change. It's just going to be a little bit different than we might think. But uh, getting back to the soybeans, these are the March beans. This is the one we're following now. We'll be moving over to July very shortly. Uh, but the market is sold off here about 10 cents, uh, about 13 cents from the high, and down about another 4 cents. It brings you down 18 cents from the high we made on the 7th, and 18 cents is the harmonic number uh, in gold. So it should have really strong support at the uh, 9.11 level. We're trading at 9.13 right now, Bob, so I hope that helps you. But, uh, you know, we're having this wide bar down, so I would let it get there and at least stay there for a couple of 15-minute bars before you bought it at that 911. In fact, it's probably better to buy it at 912 or 913, showing you that the 911 has held. So that's my two cents worth because I, I feel strongly about these numbers. And of course, when they don't actually uh, uh, work, you've got to be out of the way and say in sayonara. So we'll take a look at uh, what these beans do. We'll look at them a little later tomorrow just to see if, in fact, it did hold up. We've had a big move in crude oil, folks. Um, if you remember, we had that big 61% retracement down there at uh, 44 bucks in the uh, spot WTI, Wex Texas Crude. We got as low as 42.50, and then we snapped above that, and we got as high as 52.50 yesterday. So we rallied. We've rallied 20% in crude oil, believe it or not, without much news at all. And uh, the gasoline prices in uh, Tucson, Arizona, has have not moved. I mean, they they should have dropped below two dollars a barrel. And the lowest price we have here in Tucson is 227. And uh, so that's an interesting one to uh, you know keep a keep a close eye on. So we'll we'll see what's going on here. Okay, we got the S&P trading around 2565 now. Um, remember, we got some pretty strong support there at uh, 25. Uh, 2558, 2560, and uh, I believe we'll hit 2558, 2555 without too much trouble. But below that, and if we go below that, then you'll be looking at 2535 for a bigger move, uh, possibly uh, to the downside. So that's what we're keeping on, uh, what we're watching right now. Another one that looks real interesting from a uh, really uh, great sh a great uh, short-term trading vehicle. I mean, if you want patterns that just absolutely are fabulous, uh, take a look at this one, folks. This happens to be the uh, natural gas, and uh, boy, it, it really has some beautiful patterns here. Here you're going to see a really nice butterfly pattern, and uh, you know, it's really, uh, it, it's, it's already moved, <laughs> since it's made its high up there at the 127, it's already moved $700 and that's only been in the first uh, 45 minutes. So when these puppies move, they really move. So keep an eye on if you like If you like short-term trading and you like volatility, you cannot get a better vehicle to trade than natural gas. It gives you more bangs for the bucks than anything on the board. That's including currencies or anything else. I've nicknamed it the pork bellies of the energy complex. And boy, it does have some really wild stuff going on. And that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, another question someone's asking is about IBM. Uh, I don't haven't haven't looked at IBM in a long time, but they asked if it was going to go by the way of Sears. I don't know, but uh, you know, I never thought Sears would go to zero. I didn't think J.C. Penney's would go to zero. But uh, you know, things change, and you know, we lost Eastman Kodak. Look at General Electric. General Electric is hanging on by a thread that is uh, uh, has a fire on one end. So. You know, anything can happen. You know, general, I think IBM had went through something like 24 quarters where it didn't have an increase over the previous quarter. I mean, this this was the big, uh, this was big blue. You know, this is this is not supposed to happen. But, you know, if they get poor management, you know, this is what happens. This is what happened to Sears. It's what happened to JCPenney. And what, what happened? A guy named Bezos had an idea about retailing on the Internet, and he's worth 130 billion dollars. Uh, well, maybe half that now, now that he's getting a divorce 
uh, from his ex-wife, and they tell us on the news about how amicable how amicable it is between the two, and until you write the check. Anyway, we'll see what happens here. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last Last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're going to take a minute here and uh, look at Big Blue IBM. You can see the real key here is where we had the double ABCD patterns marked there in yellow with the yellow triangles. We gap down below that. That is really, really negative. But the easy one to look at is if we took a look at the long-term weekly chart on IBM, folks, it topped in 2013. You can see the uh, three drive pattern that occurred when it was trading at 216. We had a nice Gartley down uh, to the area of 2014. We had a little bit of a rally. Then we made a larger Gartley uh, when the low was made during the election. Uh, or excuse me, early 2016. But look look at the rally that we had into early last year of 2017, excuse me, two years ago. It was a perfect 78% retracement of the high from 2014 and a perfect 61% retracement of the high from 2012. And you had a three drive pattern going into it up there at that 182 level. And bada bing, bada boom, it dropped 80% all the way down to the... Uh, 
um, excuse me, 50% all the way down to the uh, the 105 level where it's had a little bit of a bounce in here, very close to the 78% level. So IBM is at a better buying opportunity now than it's been in a while, but uh, it's certainly a weaker than market stock, and that's something that you should always pay attention to. You want to buy the strongest stocks in a unit and sell the weakest stocks in a unit, and that's an important concept you know, to remember. Uh, regarding programming, tomorrow we're going to have Bill Meridian on our program, and he will be talking about uh, some stuff regarding uh, President Trump's uh, birth chart, along with cycles in uh, the bond, cycles also in gold, and some other interesting stuff. It'll be uh, really great to have Bill back as a guest. So this is what we're looking at right now. Remember, uh, the strong support is around 25.55 in that S&P. Uh, going below that would not be very good. 877-927-6648. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider,